to another day on my channel. My name is Jessica Hover, and this is Carly Christmas. Yay! We're best friends. <laughs> we're, we're best friends. <laughs> we love each other. Okay, you probably know her. You're probably here because of her, and if you are, thanks for coming. Um, we love Carly. Our family loves Carly. She's, yeah, we're her team. She's my favorite. You've probably seen her on the Sean Homer reality show. She's a star. She's a star of our life. Okay, so last week on Charlie's channel, we filmed a video about anxiety. It was like 12 or 13 tips to overcome anxiety. It was <laughs> there were a lot of tips. There were a lot of tips on how to Just overcome anxiety. Just great advice. There's a lot of tips for her. And we both have anxiety sometimes. <laughs> Um, okay, so then today we wanted to make a video that kind of follows up with that on specifically anxiety about the future. So I feel like a lot of times I hear people talk about how anxious they are. It's just kind of this normal thing that people feel all the time. And uh, and though we feel it, we want to be able to tackle it and talk about it and see if there's anything we can do better. Uh, Carly and I have both seen that a lot of people don't move forward into new things because they're anxious. Yeah. And so uh, so I wanted to have Carly share a story with you about different times when she's felt anxiety but pushed through it and uh, taken on the adventures that God brought her way. And uh, yeah, we're just going to encourage you. And we hope <laughs> that by the end of this video, you're a little less anxious and a little more brave to go do the things that you should be doing. So Carly, do you have any stories for us about times you felt anxious? I think sometimes people look at people who either have the job they want or like a, some kind of life they want and they just think if I can get there that would be awesome, like it must be so easy it's right there without realizing that those people felt the exact same things that you're feeling right now and still do. I know for me, I feel anxiety about what's going to come all the time, about everything. It doesn't go away or it, it wasn't people who are doing things or like going after their dreams, don't feel any less anxiety that you do. They're just choosing to push through the anxiety and move forward and take those steps day by day. I know for me, for example, with even starting a channel and moving out to LA and every step of my career since then, there was always anxiety. It was never like, oh, I got you know 100,000 subscribers, now I feel great. It never ended and it never started to feel like, okay, now I know all the answers. You never know the answers. Right. Yeah. yeah, it's not like you arrive at a place where all of a sudden there's no anxiety anymore. We were talking to a friend last week um, who was a senior in high school and she was telling me about the anxiety that she's facing in graduating high school and starting something new and I remember that. I remember feeling anxiety about like going to sixth grade. I could be a pretty anxious person <laughs> if I let the anxiety like rule me, but we don't. If, if we let the anxiety stop us, we would never actually make steps and go into the next thing that we're supposed to do working on because if you're just looking at well I don't know what this looks like I don't know if this will succeed it might stop you and a lot of times people don't pursue that dream that they want or go after the job they want because they don't know if they'll get it and it seems a little risky so instead of taking the risk they'd rather just stay in what they know and what they're doing because it's more comfortable right but also they probably the cost is higher because they're missing out on the things that they know they were made to do um, because they're they're trying to protect themselves from anxiety uh, a lot of the times we don't do things because we're like, okay, um, I see what I want to do. I don't know how to get there. I feel like it might not work out. And I feel like if it doesn't work out, people will make fun of me for it. So there's all these different levels of anxiety and shame that go into this overall goal. And so kind of the route that I started to take was first identifying what can you do every day to get toward your goal. And so just seeing it as this big picture, being like, okay, what can I do each day to get there, break it down into smaller things, and also accepting that if this is something you want to go after, people might say things about it and people might not understand, but that shouldn't stop you from going after what you want, ultimately what you were made to do. Yeah. yeah, and some of us feel anxiety because we don't actually know what is the thing we're supposed to be pursuing. So that in itself makes us anxious because we don't know where we're going or the trajectory that we're on. We're talking about this today. But uh, I like to think of, um, this kind of analogy of with God is like, if you can be moving, if you picture like a wheel or a ball or something moving, it's easier to shift. But if you're just stationary, there's no shifting because there's no movement at all. Gosh, even something I was reading, when I was reading my Bible even this last week, something that really hit me, I was rereading the story of Noah and the ark. Yeah. And even though Noah had clear direction, God saying, build this ark, he still had to build it right. not knowing. 
Yeah, it was out, right? The flood wouldn't even happen. Or then once he was in the flood, he had to trust that God would take him through it and he would actually come out of this alive. He didn't know how long he would be in the ark or how long it would go on for. So trusting God through every season, not only getting to do what you're supposed to do, and then when you're in it, also trusting that you're meant to do it to get with. Yeah, and, and sometimes with God, there's a season of just doing what you know. Like, it may not feel super passionate and vision feel filled, but you've got little glimpses of like, I know I'm good at this, or I'm passionate about this, or, or even there's a need. I'm just meeting a need somewhere. And then along the way, God can make clear like, okay, now I want you to go through this door and take this step. And it becomes a lot more clear as you get going. But the uncertainty can cause anxiety. And I think what's important to realize is that a little bit of anxiety about the future is normal. You, like, it's, it's a little scary to not know where you're going or what you're doing um, and what's gonna happen the next day. But God gives us tools to be able to handle and push through the anxiety. So a lot of that stuff we talked about on her channel last week, but even if we just look at scripture and what the Bible has to say about anxiety, um, be anxious for nothing, pray about everything. That's like a major thing that I've been learning in the last year, the significance of prayer. And, and that prayer isn't just an empty, like talking to the sky about your problems, that there's a God listening and moving on the other side of your prayers. It says um, in the book of James, the fervent prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. So basically what that means is our prayers as believers are powerful and effective. We're actually doing stuff by praying. And, uh, and also, I'm thinking about this, so there's a scripture, you probably know it, that, um, that his mercies are new every morning. You've heard that? I was thinking about how what we do as people is we picture the future without God's mercies in it. We've just got all these what ifs. Well, what if I show up here and this job doesn't happen or this person I'm dating isn't the person I thought they were? Or, you know, there's all this stuff of what if. But, the reason why Jesus would tell us what he did in the Bible not to worry about tomorrow is because our sweet little minds, we do that. We picture the future without God's mercy in it. And the truth is, every day when we wake up in the morning, God's mercies are fresh. They're right there and he's going to give us everything we need to face exactly what we're going through. And then we're going to go to bed and we're going to wake up and there's going to be brand new mercies there for us. And so for me, when I start to picture the future, if I'm getting kind of caught up in this whirlwind of like, what if, and this is so scary and I don't think I can handle it, I have to reel myself back in and, and just kind of remind myself like, okay, his mercies are there. I don't know what it's going to look like, but I know that God's good and he's the one leading us. Then the outcome is ultimately going to be good too. So a quote that kind of was always stuck with me has been that we say that we want God to work in our life, but we act like God has done all that he's going to do in our life. And we don't really picture the future with what you said with God's mercy and God being involved in doing things for us. I think something that really helped me is letting go of my timeline and what I thought my life would look like because the thing that really caused me a lot of anxiety was not knowing what the future had. So for me, not knowing, okay, what's next year look like? What does this look like in my career? Where am I going to do it? All of that really stressed me out and I kind of had to learn to take it day by day because God does say he gives us our daily bread, right. not our yearly bread, not our five-year plan. Yeah. It's just today and God's mercies are new every day. Yeah. So really learning to let go, have it be okay that we don't know what the next year looks like. Yeah, yeah. and Carly and I were talking today about how sometimes social media can feed into the anxiety because we're looking, we're scrolling through everybody's highlight, right? And so then we act kind of subconsciously end up comparing ourselves to every single person's success. So this person's career and this person's relationship and this person's home. And at the end of it, you feel like you're failing. And especially when it comes to a timeline, because we also feel like we're in a hurry. We don't know what we're running for, uh, but we're, we're striving to get there really quickly. And all of that is a lot for a person to carry. And I was thinking about anxiety when it comes to Eloise, because, so Eloise is a year old, right? And she doesn't have anxiety at this point. And I feel like if I could learn from her a bit, I want to, because the Bible talks about being childlike, but when it comes to traveling or the next day's food or <laughs> what people think of her or something like that, she just, she just isn't there. There's no capacity for anxiety. And if anything, there's just this kind of shameless trust in me and Sean to meet her needs. It's like if she's hungry, food needs to be provided. If 
She needs a place to sleep. We're going to take care of it. And I was thinking, what would my life look like if I could go to God with that much um, trust and dependence and like faith that he's going to come through, that when I have a need, it's going to be met. And instead of acting like we serve a God who doesn't need needs, is really living like my life is in his hands and it's taken care of. And even if things don't go the way we thought they would, it's going to be good because he's a good parent. Yeah, yeah, most of my anxiety comes from my own knowledge because again, it's not knowing what does the future look like because I want it to look a certain way. Right. And once I really kind of like get down to it, that it's about what I want things to be and how I want them to look. Right. It's just trying to yeah. control every situation yeah. when it's really not in my control. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, uh, one of our friends passed away in May, and one of the things she always said she comes away from cancer was that control is an illusion. Right? And so even like we could feel like we have our life in order, but we're not the ones who choose for our heart to beat or for the air to fill our lungs or, you know, like we might feel like we've got it under control, but something could totally shake that and we find out we have no control. And so for her, when she was still alive, she was always encouraging us to just trust that we just would trust that God is taking care of us and it's all going to be all right. And uh, that's helping so much. So do you have any last if we're talking to somebody who's feeling really anxious about a future, maybe a future move or a transition of some kind, what would you say to them? Honestly, I think because I've, I've gone from you know starting this job out of nowhere and moving across the country and not really knowing what it looked like and everything, and I think taking things day by day and not thinking of things on grand schemes and thinking of things like, oh my goodness, if I do this and it fails in two years, like stop those thoughts from happening and just think of what do you need to do today? And then also something that I always thought about with starting like a new business or a new career is that like the worst thing that can happen to you is you're in exactly the same place you're already in. So if you don't make any moves, if you don't try to go after your dream, the worst spot you're in is exactly where you are now. So if you at least try, you could start something and it could go somewhere, but if you don't, you're still in the same position. Right? Yeah, that's the right. Yeah, and, and ultimately, your identity isn't tied to any of this stuff. Like, right. who we are as children loved by God is so, so real and significant that if we can rest in that truth, then you can take risks because it's not about you being a success or a failure or significant or insignificant because the truth about you is still the truth about you. I think one of the biggest things I've learned throughout the last couple of years was what I'm doing, yeah. especially because I'm a perfectionist, just like, what spoiler alert, yeah. I'm a perfectionist. I had to really learn, this is something that God's been teaching me, is that I always thought that like, things needed to look perfect before I did anything, or I wouldn't share something unless it was perfect, or I wouldn't start a new endeavor until I knew that it would be perfect. And God kind of really taught me that me thinking anything I could create would be perfect was a lie. And really like, trusting in God, knowing that God is the ultimate creator. So anything that we are doing isn't even like a shadow of what God has already done and done in us. And kind of learning that all the talents I wanted to pursue were from God. Instead it became, how can I use this to serve God? Instead of how do I use this talent? To look perfect. It's, yeah. it's no longer about me looking perfect. It's about, okay, if God gave me this gift, what am I doing every day with it? Versus being like, oh, I can't show people this gift because it reflects poorly on me. Right. Because it's not supposed to reflect me. It's supposed to reflect God. Yes. It was a little wordy, but. No. That's so good. <laughs> See, we actually make these videos for ourselves. <laughs> we just, just sit and You're so good. Wow. Oh, that's so good. <laughs> <laughs> so okay well thank you so much for watching if you like what you see here like the video subscribe to the channel we make new videos every week and so does she every thursday and she got a great boyfriend so you should go watch her <laughs> he is so funny so okay go watch it okay thank you so much bye, bye.